you're here again. Excellent. Good to see you and thank you for coming to Storytime. I'm Elizabeth Reimer, the director of Freedom Public Library here in New Hampshire. I want to give some shout outs to kids who sent me pictures this last week. It's so good to see these pictures. Thank you for sending them. If you want to be included in a shout out in an upcoming story time, just send me an email. The email address is down in the notes below. Here's Amelia. Her son seems upset, but Amelia seems pretty happy. Here are Anna and Abigail watching story time. What a sweet picture. Here's Anna and her fun son. Here's a group picture of baby Michael, Bo, Elsie, Jack, Piper, Josie, Darla, and Bennett. Here are Declan and Caden with their dragons. And here's another picture of Declan with two sons. Here's Evan, Ashton, and Colin with their jellyfish, all with different expressions. I love it. Here's Haley and her son. Here's Jackson's son. It's shining down on him. Here's Rachel and her son. And Tess has got her jellyfish. Time to sing our story time song. Are you ready? Sing out loud. Sing out strong. Sit down. It's story time. And we are going to have some fun. Read books and sing some songs. So listen, everyone. I like to see your eyes grow bright. I like to see you smile. Cause you're all growing up so fast. Let's share this little while. So sit down, it's story time, and we're gonna have some fun. Read books and sing some songs. So listen, everyone. Listen, everyone. So this week we're going to be talking about sheep. It's sheep story time, one of my favorites. Our first book today is a pretty new book to the library called Sheep Dog and Sheep Sheep. And it's by Eric Barkley. He also did the illustrations. This is Sheep. She loves to dance. I do too. She knows all kinds of fancy dances, like the wildflower dance, the mud puddle dance, the get the spider off of me dance, and of course, the pee pee dance. Dancing makes her very happy, and when she's happy, she closes her eyes. And when she closes her eyes, she bumps into things, usually trees. But one day, she bumped into something that wasn't a tree. It was a someone, a very hairy someone. Holy begonia, she said. Who are you? I'm the sheepdog, the someone replied. I watch the sheep. Well, I'm a sheep sheep. I watch sheep too. Everyone knows I'm an expert at watching sheep. I don't see how you can be much of a sheep watcher with all that hair in your eyes, but I can fix that for you. I'll be right back. She skipped off toward the farmhouse. Boom, 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 boom. Just then, Sheepdog spotted an eagle overhead. It was looking at sheep like a mouse looks at cheese. The eagle dived. Whoop! But Sheepdog told him to vamoose. Look, she wasn't paying any attention at all. She had no idea the eagle was after her, did she? Sheep found Sheepdog waiting for her outside the farmhouse and she tied his hair into a pretty bow. Now you'll be able to see the sheep, she said, except you're still missing something very important. Be right back. Sheepdog looked around. It was true he could see a little better with his hair pulled up. There was the shed and the apple tree and the coyote. Coyote! Sheepdog told him to skedaddle. Look, there's sheep again, not seeing anything going on at all. Sheep returned with some binoculars. Here you go, she said. Now you'll be able to keep a sharp eye out for eagles and coyotes. Now I don't suppose you have a map under all this hair, do ya? Sheepdog shook his head no. Well, you're going to need a map so you won't get lost. Be right back. 
Okay, she's going to get a map. Do, 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 do. She danced her way toward the old truck to retrieve a map. Boop, 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 boop. The dance made her happy. She closed her eyes, and because her eyes were closed, she couldn't see that. Do you see? But Sheepdog did. She kept on dancing. Boop, boop, boop. She had some extra fancy moves. Ta-da! Like most of Sheep's dances, this one ended with a bump on the head. But she had meant to do that. Really? Sheep fished the map out of the glove box and handed it to Sheepdog. Now you're all set. You've got a hair bow so you can see, binoculars to keep an eye out for danger, and a map so you won't get lost. Sheep thought for a moment. Now all we need are the sheep. She looked around. Not a sheep in sight. She borrowed Sheepdog's binoculars. Still no sheep. She unfolded the map. Yep, they were definitely in sheep country. Where are all the sheep? She asked. Did you lose them? Look, she's shouting. See how big those words are? That means shouting in a picture book. And look, his hair blew back and the bow flew off from all that yelling. You're the only sheep, Sheepdog said. Sheep sat down and thought about being the only sheep and not a sheep sheep. And when she thought, she got very still. And when she got still, she got very quiet. Thinking could do that. Finally, Sheepdog spoke. Maybe you're not a sheep sheep. Maybe you're a dog sheep. And your job is to watch the dog. After a moment, Sheep replied, Well, of course I'm a dog sheep. Everyone knows I'm an expert at watching dogs. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. There she goes. I wonder if she'll run into something again. Probably. The last time we had sheep story time, we actually had a sheep come to the library. Do you remember that? Here's some pictures from that fun time that we had here with Nancy the sheep and Ernie her person. Another time we saw sheep was when we went to the farm together at the beginning of summer reading a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago. Do you remember? And there were a bunch of little lambs to see. That was exciting. What a nice time that was. I look forward to being able to get together with you guys again. There's a whole lot of poems and songs about sheep. I wonder if you could sing this one with me. Ba, ba, black sheep. You know that one? You ready? Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for my master and one for my dame and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. Did you sing with me? How about this one? Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. It followed her to school one day, school one day, school one day. It followed her to school one day, it was against the rules. It made the children laugh and play, laugh and play, laugh and play. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. Or how about at the library? Made you guys laugh and play that time. All right, here is a poem called Little Boy Blue. We're gonna do some actions with this one. 
Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. Where's the little boy that looks after the sheep? Can you look around for him? He's under the haystack, fast asleep. Will you wake him? <laughs> no, not I. For if I do, he'll be sure to cry. <laughs> How about this one? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, bringing their tails behind them. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, are you ready to sing about some sheep again? All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five white and fluffy sheep. All right, you gonna do this with me? Five white and fluffy sheep in the pasture fast asleep. Their wool kept them warm throughout the night. Can you do a good snore, ready? The farmer slipped away with one and sheared the sheep till he was done. Ready? Then there were four white fluffy sheep. Ba ba. Let me hear you ba. Ba ba. Okay. Four white and fluffy sheep in the pasture fast asleep. Their wool kept them warm throughout the night. <sighs> The farmer slipped away with one, sheared his sheep till it was done. Now there are three white fluffy sheep. Ba, ba. Three white and fluffy sheep in the pasture fast asleep. Their wool kept them warm throughout the night. <sighs> The farmer slipped away with one and sheared the sheep till he was done. And now there are two white fluffy sheep. Ba ba. Two white and fluffy sheep in the pasture fast asleep. Their wool kept them warm throughout the night. <sighs> The farmer slipped away with one and sheared the sheep till he was done. Now there is one white fluffy sheep. Ba, ba. One white and fluffy sheep in the pasture fast asleep. His wool kept him warm throughout the night. <sighs> The farmer slipped away with one and sheared the sheep till he was done. And now there are no white fluffy sheep. Ba ba. Okay, now what do you think this is going to be? Any guesses? Old MacDonald. All right, I've got our magic bag. Do you remember the magic bag? You'd get to choose these if you were here. All right, what are we going to sing about first? Oh, I didn't expect that. What's that? A tractor. So what sound does a tractor make? Vroom, vroom, I guess. Vroom, vroom. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm there was a tractor, E-I-E-I-O, with a vroom, vroom here and a vroom, vroom there, here, vroom, there, vroom, everywhere, vroom, vroom. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. What else do I have in here? Do, 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 do. <gasps> hey, that's good for today, right? What is that? Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm there was a sheep, E-I-E-I-O, the ba-ba here and the ba-ba there, here, ba, there, ba, everywhere, ba-ba. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Are you singing with me? Please sing with me. Sing out loud. Those must be his kids. Okay, maybe they can be laughing. How about ha ha here? Okay, ready? Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm there were some kids, E-I-E-I-O, with a ha ha here and a ha ha there, here a ha, there a ha, everywhere a ha ha. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Ready? What will be next? You wanna guess? What do you think it'll be? On a farm? Hmm? Did you say cow? 
I bet you did. If you said cow, you were right. All right, what does a cow say? Yeah. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo-moo. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Let's do one more. There's a more, lot more animals in here. Aww. I love it. What's that? A pig. And what's a pig say? Yep. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O, with an oink oink here and an oink oink there, here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink oink. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Let's just see what else we had, okay? All right. Dog. Yep. What does the dog say? Woof. Yeah. And, uh, what? Duck. Duck says, quack. Okay. I'll put him down here sideways. Can you see it? Horse. Nay, nay here and a nay, nay there. Oh, I had put these together. Some little chicks. And you have to have a cat on the farm to catch the mice, right? All right. Thank you, everybody. All right, it's time to sing about you. Have a look at what you're wearing. What you're wearing. Hmm? I have my, my tassel shirt. All right, my white tassel shirt. How about that? You ready to sing it? Elizabeth's wearing her white tassel shirt, her white tassel shirt, her white tassel shirt. Elizabeth's wearing her white tassel shirt all day long. Please take a bow. So really happy to see you guys. Thanks for coming in. Who wants to go first? All right, Kaden, what do you want to sing about? My mask. Okay, you want to put it on? All right. Wait, yeah. is it black? It's blue. Blue. Navy blue. It's navy blue? Okay, we'll say navy blue. Caden's wearing his navy blue mask, his navy blue mask, his navy blue mask. Caden's wearing his navy blue mask all day long. Please take a bow. Yay! You're going to take it off? I thought you were going to wear it all day long. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can take it off. All right, Declan, what about you? What do you want to sing about? My sword. So you're, you have your sword today? We'll say you have it. Okay? It's kind of floppy. It's not going to stab very many people, is it? <laughs> it's not going to stab anyone. <laughs> not going to stab anyone, which is a good thing. Okay. Declan's got his sword today, his sword today, his sword today. Declan's got his sword today, all day long. Please take a bow. Yay! All right, our next sheep book is called Babwa and William by David Elliott and illustrated by Melissa Sweet. Look, they live in a travel trailer. That looks so cute, doesn't it? This is William. He is a sheep. You will note that William is reading. There are not many sheep who read, but William is one of them. This is Babwa, also a sheep. In this picture, Babwa is knitting. Knitting is a very practical hobby for a sheep. It's surprising not more of them do it. Oh well. Babwa and William are best friends. They spend most days reading and knitting, knitting and reading. Sounds kind of boring, but they like it. It looks cozy, huh? One day, William looked up from his book, an adventure story, pirates, treasure chests, that sort of thing. You know, I've been thinking, he said to Babwa. Thinking is good, Babwa answered, or so I've heard. We should have an adventure of our own, said William. Agreed, said Babwa. There are only so many sweaters one sheep can knit. And so the two friends set off. The day was perfect for such a thing. The flowers were blooming, the sun was shining, the birds were singing. This last bit about the birds was especially good because adventures usually involve some kind of trouble and it's nice to have a little bird song to help you through it. 
There was, however, a problem. Look. What was the problem? Babwa and William lived in a field, and the field was surrounded by a stone wall. Which way? asked William. You decide, Babwa answered. Left, then, said William. Babwa thought they should have gone right. <laughs> the two sheep walked around the field once, twice, three times. Oh, is this what adventures are like? Babwa asked. All this walking, I mean. Well, I don't know, said William, but I do know it's making me hungry. Me too, Babwa replied. Grass, anyone? The two friends were just finishing their lunch when quite unexpectedly they were approached by a third sheep. Hmm, a sheep with a long rangy tail, a sheep with a sharp whiskered snout, a sheep with a filthy wool coat. What do you think it is? Ooh, what do you think it is? Uh, hey there, mutton chops, said the uh, uh, sheep. What's shaking? Huh. When he grinned, Babwa's heart broke. His mother had never taught him to brush his teeth. Well, we've been looking for an adventure, William said. Look no longer, the new sheep said. You found one. And he snapped his horrid teeth most unpleasantly. Run, said William. It's that wolf in sheep's clothing I've read about. If this is an adventure, said Babwa, I'm not a fan. Oddly, the bird song did not seem to help much. Ah. Suddenly, the wolf stopped his shenanigans. Let, let, let's quit this nonsense for a minute, he said to William. I'm interested in that thing you said earlier. What thing? asked William. That thing about me, said the wolf. William thought for a moment. Hmm, not sure, he said. But Babwa's memory was better than William's. He said he's read about you, she said to the wolf. The wolf's eyes, which up to now had been kind of shifty looking, grew round and large. Is it true? He asked William. Have you, have you actually read about me? See for yourself. He reached into his backpack and pulled out a book. The wolf took a step backward. He looked at the blue sky, he looked at the green grass, he looked at the big stone wall, he did not look at the book. Oh dear, said William, I see the problem. What problem, said the wolf, there's no problem. You can't read, can you, said William. The wolf howled a mournful lupine howl. How? He dropped his shaggy lupine head. Babwa's heart broke for a second time as a salty lupine tear fell on the soft ground. Plop. It's not my fault, the wolf cried. I'm just not the reading kind. William can teach you, you know, said Babwa. The wolf lifted his head and looked at William. Would you, asked the wolf, would you do that for me? William didn't seem so sure. Of course he would, said Babwa. And in the meantime, I'll knit you a new coat. That one is a disgrace. And so William went about the business of teaching the wolf to read. It wasn't easy. Look, little pigs, red riding hood. Well, he's teaching him to read some interesting stories for a wolf. The wolf often jumped up in the middle of a lesson and chased the two sheep around the field. This irritated William no end. Look, there he goes. Don't let it get to you, William, said Babwa. He's just following his nature. Besides, all that reading and knitting has taken its toll. We can use the exercise. Eventually, after a lot of hard work and several extra help sessions, the wolf did learn to read. And when he saw what that book had said about him, he was outraged. He was really upset. 
This is so unfair, he complained. It says here I'm cruel and sneaky. And your point, said William. Well, it's not true, the wolf insisted. I'm just, I'm just rambunctious. Well, that's one word for it, said Babwa. And so over time, an unlikely friendship formed between the wolf and the two sheep, one that involved a fair amount of chasing. Here they go again. But there were quiet times too. One afternoon when the wolf was on the second volume of a new series he liked and the two sheep had shed quite a few pounds, William turned to Babwa. This has been quite an adventure after all. Babwa put down her knitting, a set of snazzy leg warmers for the wolf. I agree, she replied, much better than pirates. The wolf looked up from his book. Can you two chatter cheeks keep the noise down? He said, I'm reading over here. So I've discovered a whole bunch of really fun music by Mr. Eric and Mr. Michael. The first one is called Dance, Freeze, Melt. Are you ready? Everybody stand up and let's dance, then freeze, and then melt. Okay, you ready? for the number dance. Are you ready? Zigzag, zigzag, round and round, round and round, side to side, 
two songs, but I wanted to throw in a bonus song today, okay? So get out your shaker egg. Get out your shaker egg, because we're going to do a shaker song. This one's called, I Can Shake My Shaker Egg. I can shake my shaker egg, shaker egg, shaker egg. I can shake my shaker egg and sneak around the room. Sneak around the room. I can shake my shaker egg, shaker egg, shaker egg. I can shake my shaker egg and sneak around the room. out of breath. Whew, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? All right, our last book today is called Where is the Green Sheep? And it's by Mem Fox with illustrations by Judy Horacek. <clears throat> here is the blue sheep. And here is the red sheep. And here is the bath sheep. Do you like to have a bubble bath? Did you know sheep do too? And here is the bed sheep. But where is the green sheep? Here is the thin sheep. And here is the wide sheep. Here is the swing sheep. And here is the slide sheep. But where is the green sheep? Here is the up sheep, and here is the down sheep, right? Here is the band sheep, and here is the clown sheep. But where is the green sheep? Here is the, what's that? Sun sheep, and here is the rain sheep. Here is the car sheep, and here is the train sheep. But where is the green sheep? Here is the wind sheep, and here is the wave sheep. Here is the scared sheep, and here is the brave sheep. But where is the green sheep? Here is the near sheep. And here is the far sheep. Here is the, what's that? Moon sheep. And here is the star sheep. But where is the green sheep? Gosh, look at all the sheep, a fishing sheep and a pyramid sheep, and a flying sheep, and a fruit cat sheep. Oh. Where is that green sheep? Turn the page quietly. Let's take a peep. Ready? Oh, here's our green sheep, fast asleep. Where's the green sheep? Okay, look at this cute thing. This is what we're going to make today. A sheep. Very cute. Okay, so what did you get? That looks like the head. That looks like the body. That looks like the wool. That looks like the glue. You didn't get the glue, but I hope you have some, but you're gonna need it. So then we have 
feet parts and ear parts and face part. The first thing we need to do is put on the feet. The feet are the smaller of the black halves. So turn your round part over and glue on the feet. I think I'll just put glue on the back. And here's one foot and I think I'll have them kind of like that. They seem kind of close together for feet. They should be a little farther apart so the poor sheep doesn't fall over, right? <laughs> All right, so now I've got the feet and now it's time to put the wool on. All right, I was thinking maybe white glue would be good, Elmer's glue. But I don't know whether you have that or not. <clears throat> I think that Luann did it with glue stick. I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to put a lot of glue on the body of the sheep because we're going to be putting the wool, also known as cotton balls, on the body, okay? All right, I put a lot of glue on there. Let's see if this will hold. Okay. Here we go, William. Wow, that was like the perfect amount. Bravo. Huh. Luann, you did an awesome job. Thank you. All right, so now we've got a very woolly sheep. And we're going to glue on a body or a face. I guess this is the face. Yeah, the face. This was the body. Now we're going to glue the face on to the wool, the cotton balls. So lots of glue on the back of the face. So I'm going to put this right there. Oh, you know, I probably should have put the ears on first. Hmm. I'm just going to stick them under there. All right, you probably should put the ears on first. So I've got the face on. Now I'm going to tuck the ears on underneath. There's one. And I'm going to tuck the other ear under there. Better to just put them on first and then glue the face on, okay? Probably should put the eyes on there too. I didn't do this right. It doesn't matter though, does it? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. We can do it whatever way we want to. All right, so now I've got a cute little sheep with ears and a face. It needs some eyes though, doesn't it? All right, so these eyeballs are not self-stick, I don't think. So I'm going to put some eyes on the back of this googly eye. Whoop. Squash. And on this googly eye. Squash. Bah. Bah. <laughs> what should I name my sheep? I think I'm going to name my sheep Clarice. Clarice. Hi, Clarice. What's your sheep's name? Let me know, okay? I hope you've had fun at sheep story time and then you'll come back next week, okay? I'll see you soon. Bye for now.